Hey there, adventure seekers. Thank you so much for tuning in to uh, my channel and this video. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know whenever we put out more content. And as always, give us a thumbs up, share this video if it was helpful and you know somebody else who might benefit from it. So today we're going to continue our smart RV and honestly smart home to series and we're gonna be installing the router, home assistant, maybe a few other things. We'll just have to see how it goes. Very quickly, very easily. And if you didn't already watch the other video that I had about installing Proxmox, or you kind of caught this in the middle, and there's a link in the description below to that video, which kind of kicks things off. And what we're gonna do with all of this is we're gonna create a smart home, smart RV environment that you can control without internet access with your voice. That's the the end goal but we got to build to get there and before that we're going to go ahead and get the building blocks in place and we're going to talk about a few things you're going to need and, and again this is not going to be super expensive this is not going to be in the thousands of dollars it could be it depends on how much you want to control in, in your home or rv so without further ado let's go ahead and jump back on um, the box we installed proxmox on and install our router which is the open wrt router and as always all this software we're using is 100% free and very well supported by the community as well. All right, so first thing we need to do is we got to get that Proxmox install cleaned up a little bit from our previous video we mentioned, getting rid of that nag screen for the license and things like that. And we're going to do that very easily and very quickly. We're going to do that by going to this website right here. There's a link in the description below. This person has put together a list of scripts we're going to use a lot of them today to do all the work automatically. So the first thing we want to do is we want to click here on the Proxmox VE tools and we got all these we can be running. So the first thing we want to do is we would definitely want to do the post install. If we click on that, it's going to tell us what it's going to do and it's going to disable the enterprise um, repo, which that's the database for updates for people who have a paid license. So since we don't have a paid license, then we're going to get disable that. That way we don't get um, nagging messages. We're also going to enable the no subscription repo. That way we can access updates that subscription isn't required for. Get rid of the subscription nag. We're gonna update Proxmox and then it's gonna reboot. And all you gotta do to make this happen is you click copy to copy this command right here. And then you go over to your Proxmox instance. Make sure you've selected, well, if like me, it's, it's probably yours too if you did defaults. It's called Proxmox and you click on shell and that's gonna bring you to this command prompt. Now that's where we're gonna be doing pretty much everything in this video. Then all you gotta do is hit uh, right click on your mouse, paste as plain text, and there it is pasted that command in, and then you just hit enter and follow the instructions. Now we're not gonna do that because I've already done that on this uh, particular machine. So we're just gonna pretend that's done. Any of these other ones you wanna do, that's fine. I would highly recommend doing the dark theme. It's the same process, you just run this command. And if you're not sure what any of these are, you can just click on them. Kernel clean, it cleans unused kernels. Get rid of that again, you just click on it and you just go through these and look at which ones you want to try and which ones you, know, you don't really care about right now. But those are the two I recommend to do. So the next thing we're gonna do is, and I'll just minimize this to make it smaller, is we need to install our router. And how easy is that gonna be? Well, that's gonna be super easy. Now, if you're not planning on using the, the, the OpenWRT router that I'm talking about here, that's okay, you can use your own router. Um, we'll talk about that more when we get to the specifics of, of a router install. But I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to install, well, pretty much any of this stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and start with the router. So we're gonna come down here and look for server networking, click on it. We got a few things here we can, and we're gonna use you know, some of these in the future. But the first thing we wanna do is click on the OpenWRT VM. And this explains what the OpenWRT is. It even has a link to their page. And again, this is free software and we're just gonna click copy and we're gonna go ahead and just install this so we can get a feel for how everything works. We're gonna go back over here to our Proxmox instance, click paste, hit enter, and it's gonna create a new VM. Do you wanna proceed? Now, if you notice, the mouse doesn't work because this is a command line. So you can just use the space bar, hit enter. Um, I hit the space bar for that one. Use default settings. 
Um, I always just pick advanced. It's still going to throw in the default settings and suggestion, but it gives you an opportunity to see what they are and make changes as you wish. So we'll go ahead and click advanced. The virtual machine ID, that's the number assigned to that. And you, that can be left as default. Or if you set up a specific numbering scheme that you want to use, um, then you can change it there. The number really doesn't matter. It's just an identifier for that particular virtual machine. So we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. And it's gonna set the host name. And that's the name you see next to the um, number here on the screen. And it's also the host name of that device. So OpenWRT. That's fine. We'll keep that. So hit OK, hit enter. How many CPU cores? Um, this is recommending one, and that's fine because uh, the router, believe it or not, doesn't use a lot of resources from the computer. Allocate RAM in megabytes, and this is 256 megabytes. That's fine. The WAN bridge, that is the connection to your internet sources and, and to be able to connect to all the other uh, machines in this so that's the default and we're going to keep that there router ip address so since this is a router you're going to have to set an ip address for it now the ip address is going to be the basis of all the ip addresses on your local network now i don't want to get too deep in the weeds about um, ip addressing there's lots of other videos on that um, i'd suggest you go um, do a, a youtube search for that what i would recommend most routers that you buy will come with an IP address of 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1 and a lot of devices will come with those as a default. To make life a little bit easier on you and not have IP address conflicts, I would recommend changing that third octet. As you can see, I'm going to put them right up here. You've got the first octet, which is 192, the second octet, which is 168. Now, you can't really change those. Um, you can, but let's keep it simple unless you're an advanced um, networking user. This is the first one you can change, which is the third octet, and change it to anything between zero and 254. You can pick any number you want. And I'll just say 11, because that's kind of an odd number and the odds of me running into a device and adding it to my network that's got that hard-coded in it, pretty slim. So once we get um, that third octet set to whatever number you want, then the fourth octet, or the last one, will be, since this is the router, will just be the number one, usually. So let's, let's keep it as number one. So for our example, we're gonna say we are 192.168.11.1. And I hit tab, and then spacebar. Now the router net mask, you're just gonna say 255.255.255.0. If you don't know what the net mask is, don't worry about it. This is the default make your life easier your mac address your machine address you can leave that as is unless you need to set it to a specific mac address for some reason lan mac address we'll leave that there too set a wan vlan leave blank for default so we're going to leave blank lan vlan 99 we'll just leave that alone default start the vm when completed um, we're just going to say no for right now are you ready to create it yes and now it's going to go through and ask us where do we want to install it now as you can see here i have two choices now if you followed my previous video on installing proxmox you know that we have an internal hard drive which has the proxmox operating system on it and that's pretty much it and we installed a external drive in my case a two terabyte hard drive and i named it vm and that's where we're going to be installing all of our well vms our virtual machines so i'm going to hit the space bar to select that and then I'm gonna go down here and hit okay. And it's gonna do its thing. So when this is done, I'm actually gonna have a router. All I need to do is go in and configure it. That's the subject of another video because if you want to learn how to configure and set up a router, that's a little bit more detailed. Um, it's not hard and there's lots of other videos out there on how to do it. And I, we're gonna do a video that shows you exactly how you need to do it for what we care about, which is the smart home slash smart RV. For those of you wondering, yes, you'll be able to combine multiple network inputs. Like I know a lot of RVers have 
different uh, internet access methods um, hope in, in, in the hopes that at least one of them works wherever they're at. Um, for example, here we have Starlink, we have uh, T-Mobile, and we have uh, Visible, which is a Verizon, it's a, and we also have um, Calix Institute. So we have multiple choices. OpenWRT allows you to connect all those, and you can actually either share the load or prioritize one connection over another. You can set all that up in the OpenWRT software relatively simply. And again, that's another um, video. Or uh, if you want to just combine them all and use them all together, there's a program out there called Speedify. And I did a video on that and I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. Now, let's go ahead and let this finish up. And um, then we're gonna go into Home Assistant. <laughs>